right, so let's do the B part of that uh, question number two. Sketch a graph of each quadratic function. B part, y equals 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. My suggestion, just, uh, just like last time, is to check out the discriminant. Do you actually need that to, um, to solve it? No, but it helps to inform which way we're going to, uh, which way we're going to work with it. Are we going to go the uh, standard, uh, standard form route where we can figure, pick out right away where the vertex is? Or are we going to uh, try to factor the equation and uh, find out the roots from there? Okay, instead of finding the vertex. So, uh, first things first, we know that the y-intercept is 5. Okay? Next, we, what we want to do is we want to check the discriminant. 12 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 5, which is 144 minus 80, which is just 64. Now, 64 is a great number to get because it's, um, it's greater than zero and it's a perfect square. So that tells us that we have two real roots at nice numbers. So instead of having to whip out the quadratic formula to figure out what the, um, to figure out what the roots of this equation are or what the zeros of this function are, all we need to do is we need to factor. And that's something that we feel pretty com uh, comfortable about uh, at this point. So we know that the y-intercepts are this. What are the x-intercepts? Let's factor and find out. So we want to set y equal to 0 because when, when we find the x-intercepts, y equals 0, just like when we find the y-intercept, x equals 0. So 0 equals 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. What we want to do is we want to figure out two numbers that multiply out to 20 and add up to 12. It's just 2 and 10. 0 equals 4x squared plus 10x uh, plus 2x plus 5. 0 equals, uh, sorry, not 4, but 2x x plus, um, x plus 5. Yep. And, uh, oh sorry, it's 2x plus 5. 2 times 2x plus 5 uh, plus 1 times 2x plus 5. So when I'm factoring this thing out, all I'm getting is 0 equals 2x plus 1. 2x plus the coefficient in front here is 1 um, times 2x plus 5. All right, so we have two roots here, and uh, sorry, we have two roots of these equations, or two x-intercepts. So they're going to be x int. Um, they are going to be at negative one half, and at negative five over two. All right, so we have the x-intercepts. We have the y-intercepts. Uh, what's next? Well, what we can do is we can use those x-intercepts that we just found to figure out what the axis of symmetry is. When we know what the axis of symmetry is, we know the x point of the vertex. We can put that into the equation, and then we can get the y uh, value of the vertex. So, we're going to do axis of symmetry. x equals x2, negative 1 half, plus x1, minus 5 over 2, divided by 2. A half minus 5 over 2 is, uh, is going to be, I'll just write up the steps, negative 1 minus 5 is going to be 6, negative 6 over 2 over 2, Negative 6 over 2, well that's just 3. x equals negative 3 over 2. So this right here is our axis of symmetry. It's also the x value of our vertex. So if I put in the x value of our vertex, it's going to, uh, into this equation here, it's going to give me the y value of my vertex. Okay. Okay. 
So the y value of the vertex, we're just going to say y equals 4 times negative 3 over 2 squared plus 12 times negative 3 over 2 plus 5. Now I went through the kind of nitty gritty steps here. I'm just going to give you a final, um, a final answer here. It's going to be negative 4. So the vertex is going to be is going to be at negative 3 over 2 comma negative 4. We also know that it opens up. So guys, we're kind of off to the races here. Is there any reason why I'm counting to six? No, I just I just know that when I'm gonna graph this, six is gonna be enough uh, tick tick marks. <laughs> for, uh, for lack of a better word. So I know that my two uh, my two x intercepts are gonna be at negative half, right there, and negative five over two, which is two and a half. I know that my vertex is at one and a half and negative four. Oh, I forgot to put on my scale. There we go. So each tick tick mark is one. So one, two, three, four, uh, right here. And I know that my x-intercept is five. One, two, three, four, five. What I can also do is I can also say, okay, if I go from this to here to half, it's going to, it's going to go up to five. Since we know that it's mirrored in the axis of symmetry, which occurs at um, x equals negative 3 over 2, I know that at negative 3, we're also going to be at 5. Now, if you didn't follow that logic, that's okay. That's kind of a, um, that's kind of a, a special little tip or trick. Um, if you want me to explain that better in class, I can do that. And there we go. We have our equation. Sorry, we have our function, not equation. Um, because I'm a great math student, well, sometimes I'm a great math student, uh, I'm going to label this thing 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. And we've made our sketch. We're done.